Hi friends, I'm excited to be with you today to share a new layout for the Vicki Booten Design Team using the Discover and Create Collection. I am using this amazing piece of acetate here and I love the, like the photo uh, or film strip kind of feel of that. And I wanted, I find when I am using a collection and I get a whole collection of something I never used the acetate page. And so I wanted, I really wanted to challenge myself this time to use that. And it's so beautiful and colorful. And I thought it'd be great for a page that has lots of photos on it. So I am just trimming down some strips. I wanted to use three strips of it and try to get the most colorful pieces on the paper <laughs> it's visible. So I'm using a piece of foundations, mixed media white cardstock first. I'm putting that down and then I'm going to kind of lay out where I want these strips to go. And I kind of know that I want it to look sort of like that. And I'm thinking that's when my hands are going on the table like that, that's me thinking uh, about what I want to do. And I kind of knew I wanted the photos to go across the center. So first I'm going to start with some salvaged patina patina distress oxide and I am just using my ink blending brush and I'm putting some of that salvaged patina on the background and I'm going to kind of do like just a big splotch of it and so most of this is going to be covered up so it doesn't really matter exactly what it looks like I just know that I want kind of that color poking out behind there and it didn't change I was worried about putting anything too dark behind the film strip pieces because they are clear acetate and or you know transparent acetate and so I knew that if I put like a dark color behind there you would be able to see it or you wouldn't be able to see the colors on those uh, film strip pieces so I did just a little bit of glue with that kind of lighter color of ox distress oxide behind it and then I'm going to take a little bit of white gesso because I knew I wanted some mixed media to go on top of this part. And I was a little bit worried that texture paste might have, might have been fine. Um, but I was a little bit worried that texture paste might flake off of the acetate. So I put a little gesso down just to kind of fade out a little bit of that color. And then also to make sure that my medium that I'm going to put on top of it sticks to it. So I did put a little gesso, used my brayer tool to spread it out. And then I'm going to use some paper towels to kind of wipe a little bit of it off because I didn't want to fade out all of the background film strips. So I wiped off a little bit of that white part. I just wanted to kind of have enough there that it gave me a resting place for my photos and some more mixed media. So I am going to let that gesso dry. And then I'm using one of Vicki Booten's stencils that she has on her website. And I am using one of her texture pastes. This one is blue Hawaiian. And really it's more like a turquoise. <laughs> so I would call it, you know, more turquoise than blue, but um, it's called Blue Hawaiian. And that is, this one is from a previous release. I'm not sure if this color is being released in the new mixed media line, but this is from the last time she, re um, she released some of those matte texture pastes with her American Crafts line. And so I've still got it and I'm still using it. <laughs> Um, and then I had six photos that I'm going to be using on this layout and I took two of the chipboard frames and I knew I wanted to use those two chipboard frames to kind of emphasize the two photos that have people in them. Um, so, and the, they didn't really match in color and I didn't have two frames that were the exact same size that matched in color. So I took one and just added gray distress oxide to it. It's not actually called gray. I can't remember the name of it, but um, it's a gray distress oxide. And I just inked the edges of it to match the other photo frame or chipboard frame. And that seemed to work out really well. So these photos are of, I'm still working through my grease trip. <laughs> so these photos are from a street art tour or graffiti tour that we took through Athens. And I absolutely love the photos. I have lots and lots and lots more photos from the graffiti tour, but I wanted to kind of emphasize some of my favorite ones. And I will still add the other photos kind of in pocket pages in between layouts, but I wanted to put my favorite ones on this layout. 
And then our tour guide, Eva, she's in one of the photos with my kids. And then the four of us, like my husband and I with our kids are in, um, the other layout. So, I mean, the other photo that I'm, that I put up on the frame. So the other four photos that I've got here are of pieces of graffiti that I really, really liked. And I've got lots of great information about each of the artists, the graffiti artists, and uh, some other journaling that I'll add when I add a pocket page to the middle. So, because I wrote down, I came home from this, or came back to the um, apartment that we were staying in and wrote down every single thing I could remember uh, that Eva had taught us about the artists and why they do their art and um, what a powerful message lots of the pieces of artwork have. So I thought that was really neat. So then what I did here is I went through the ephemera and I pulled out some of the paint brushes, which I thought was really cool because, you know, graffiti, they're painting things on walls. Um, they might not be using paint brushes. I don't know. <laughs> they use all different kinds of tools and mediums actually, um, that I learned on this tour. So, but I thought the, I thought the paint brushes were fitting for, uh, for graffiti. So I pulled those four paint brushes out and then I did trim off the white edges of each of those because they did have a white border around each of the paint brushes. So I trimmed that off, off camera mostly. And then I'm adding craft foam behind each brush to kind of pop that up on the page. And I have it to where there's two on the top and then two on the bottom and they're going to kind of point to or frame the pieces of title that I'm going to add. So I am using the chipboard set from the Discover and Create collection for that street art title. It's kind of hard to see right now, but I am going to use one of the pieces of washi tape that is predominantly white, and I am uh, adhering that down to a piece of white cardstock to make it totally white because it was kind of like a, almost like a transparent vellum look. And so I adhere that down to a piece of white cardstock so that it would be bright white behind it. And it is a bunch of colored, it looks like colored pencils. So I thought that also was perfect for the art. And that is going to act just as a resting piece. I'm going to kind of tuck that in a little bit behind the photos or behind those photo frames. Sorry, I've got a cold. So it's kind of hard for me to, to breathe while I'm trying to, um, explain what I'm doing here. So I added that piece of, or that strip of the washi tape, and then I'm going to glue my title to it. And that's actually going to help some of the color on those letters stand out a little bit more from the background. So it's kind of hard to see here in the video, but you will be able to, on the finished layout, you can easily read what it says. And then that piece, that word capturing was a piece of cardstock ephemera. And I did trim off some of the border of that as well, because it did have a pretty thick border and I wanted it to just have a, a slight, you know, a slightly thinner white border around it. So I used that capturing street art and then a story worth telling. I am adding from the sticker book and adding craft foam behind that so that it's on the same level as the paintbrush. And then can I hear that down? And I thought that was really important. It definitely, these artists have a story worth telling. Many of the messages that they are, um, you know, there's lots of political messages in their art. And then there's lots of um, like human rights things. They've got, they've got stories to tell. And so I thought it was really important to make sure that I was kind of capturing that on this layout. So a story worth telling was a perfect title for that because I always believe that artists have a story to tell that's important that people listen. So um, really cool things that I learned about their graffiti there. And I wanted to make sure that I remember that. So then here, I'm going to take one of another one of the little pieces or stickers from the sticker sheet. And I'm going to add journaling lines to it. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of journaling. Like I said, most of my journaling will be on the pocket pages between my layouts that are specifically about each piece of art that we saw. But I wanted to just make sure I captured Eva's name on um, on my journaling here so that I always remembered who, who it was that took us on our tour. And just to write how much we loved it because we absolutely loved it. So I've got that little piece. And I did you did see me adhere that down to white cardstock. I, I do that with stickers a lot um, because it helps me be able to move them around and I don't really know why I do it, but <laughs> it definitely does help add a little bit more, um, 
not meat to the sticker, but it makes it a little bit more sturdy, I guess I could say. And then I did pop it up on some craft foam and distressed the edges of it. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of tangled thread back behind it. Again, I'm in my tangled thread error, I don't know. Um, I went to a craft weekend, they were doing that on one of the layouts and I remembered how much I love it. And so now I'm just, I'm like, it's a thing. I'm <laughs> wanting to do it on every page now. So I don't know, we'll see, maybe it's a phase. Uh, so I added a, just a little bit of tangled thread back behind that journaling block and it's purp it's the purple that matches the, the collection really well, the discover and create collection really well. It's a very unique purple in this collection. I love it. It's like not super purple. It's not pink. It's like kind of in the middle. I don't know. It's perfect. And then, um, I'm going to do another little piece up above the title up there. And that word capturing, capturing street art, um, that word capturing is popped up on craft foam as well. I did that off camera, but just so you know, because I wanted it to kind of be at the same level as those other letters. And those letters are chipboard letters from the collection. And I think I did it off camera. I did color some of the letters. So street art, um, like the T, oh, and I don't know why I don't have any of that video in here. Um, the T I did add white to on top of it. Like I added white acrylic paint and then I colored it orange because I needed it to be a little bit brighter. And then like the middle of the A I colored, the bottom of the other T I colored orange. So I did kind of embellish my alphas as well because the alpha sheet does have a lot of oranges in it, but I didn't have any of those letters that I needed that had orange. So I just made them orange <laughs> by adding a little bit of paint and some marker and coloring them. And then here I'm adding just a couple gold, gold dots from the foam sheet, foam sticker sheet. And then of course I'm going to add my pops of color in the three coordinating colors. And I love how this layout turned out. I love how the acetate strips look on the background. I love how bright and colorful they are and how it speaks to the fact that I've got all those photos that are full of color and art. Uh, I just love how it all ties together. So there is the finished layout. If you have any questions, please pop them down in the comments. I will answer them. And I hope you enjoyed watching the process. I love uh, sharing how everything comes together because a lot of times in a final layout, when you're just looking at photos, you don't notice all of those pieces uh, that went into a piece of art. But when you watch it being created, you can see all of the layers and all of the different things. So I enjoy sharing that with you. And I hope you have an awesome day and get time to create. Bye, guys.